chapter 24. We're now reading from verse 46 and verse 47. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behold befitted Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins shall be preached in his name among all nations. Remission of sin, repentance, removal of sin, redemption should be preached in his name among all nations. Among all nations. Now, let's, uh, let's uh, put on a thinking cap. How are we going to do this? Are we going to be able to reach all nations? Are you thinking about those nations? Uh, when, if you think in a broad way, rivers separate those nations. And mountains sometimes separate those nations. Language barrier also separate those nations. How are we going to do it? You reach all nations. Are you just going to, you know, jump out and say, now we've got the Great Commission. We're going to reach all nations. Now, that's why we need planning. And as we're going to plan, how do we do it? And thank God, the Bible is, has not left us in darkness as to how to do it. And some people, you know, they are telling us, works matter, not necessarily harder. Somebody just told me recently, said, well, that's just half the truth. Works matter and work harder. We need to work hard. We need to work smart. If we don't work smart, there's no planning. We just, you know, scatter all our energies everywhere. We're doing this, we're doing that, and uh, we're not reaching anyone. We're not going anywhere. But this time, we're going to do something. I said we're going to do something. Now, in the planning to reach the world, that is your world. Not just the whole world, but your own world. How do we do that? Uh, number one, search. Number one, search or make a survey. Now, if I asked you about your city here in New York, uh, what do you search? What do you survey? I'm asking you how many languages are represented in New York. Probably all the languages of the world. How many tribes and how many groups of people, people groups are represented in New York alone? Probably all the people groups of the world. What's the education level of, uh, you know, of the people in New York? You think everybody speaks uh, the English you speak? No, not at all. And then what's, uh, what are the, you know, kind of uh, barriers, cultural barriers you have? You need to study. You need to find out. You need to search. Because if you do not search, you're not going to be able to reach the people. Search. That's number one. We're looking at Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. And we're looking at verses 1 and 2. Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan. He was going to give it to them. But he needed to search the land. Were they world cities? The people there, are they warriors? Are they giants? Are they people like us? Are they people who are different from us? Are they prepared to fight against us? Or as Rahab said, are their hearts melted like water and they are afraid of us? Let's search. Let's search. What kind of people do you have there? And remember, he gave it to them by promise. And yet, and yet he told them, if you are going to get into the land, make your search. Make your survey. That's what we're saying. If we're planning to reach out to the people in this, uh, in this area of the world, make your search. Where I come from, that's what we do. We make a search. We do some research. We find out. And you have a lot of materials. Internet is there now. And then you can get all this information. Number one is to search. Number two, specialize. I'll explain to you what that means, specialize. We cannot be jack of all trade and master of none. And think that we're going to evangelize the world in which we live. If you look at First Chronicles chapter 12. First Chronicles chapter 12. We're looking at uh, verse 32, First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, and the ch of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. Of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. Not everybody had that. This was a special thing for them, a special gift for them. And you know, as you look at our churches today, you find some people, uh, they're kind of, uh, uh, they're, they're masters on the internet, on the computer. 
and how to get all these things, they analyze all the data. And they're just there in our church. And because they cannot sing, and because they cannot join prayer warriors, and because they cannot listen to the scripture, they're useless to us in the church. And yet they have specialized knowledge that they can use that can help us to actually know the world in which we live, evangelize the world in which we live. There's some communication experts in our church, but they are not, we don't make them workers. Because they are not our regular kind of workers. They are not ushers. They are not cleaners. They are not, uh, uh, you know, they are not uh, house fellowship leaders. And therefore we say, he doesn't have time. Yes, he doesn't have time for the kind of thing you have for him to do. But if you were thinking about, uh, you know, some real things to do, that's uh, communication. And then how to use this and use that and get the message across. That young man there can actually get the message across to hundreds and thousands of people. What the pastor cannot do, what the, what the people that the pastor cannot reach, he can reach them because that is his area. And uh, the man does not feel, the lady does not feel she can do anything in the church because we do not have any space for such people. And now you think about the youth section. In the youth section, those young people, the things they can do with the computer and the things they can do with the telephone and, you know, the, the things, the way they play with those things. And you can use those things for the gospel, you know, because it's a specialized area. We're told of these children of Issachar and it says they had the understanding of the times, understanding of the times. Uh, have you noticed, uh, look up for a moment, you, you went out with your, you know, with your son or your daughter. And uh, you're trying to communicate something to, you know, maybe a regular American. And he says, pardon me, what did you say? And then you repeated it and he said, what does that mean? And you're wondering, I understand myself. <laughs> he says, this man cannot understand me. And then your, you know, teenager girl, you know, will speak to that person and says, this is what mommy is saying. And speak it, you know, the normal, the regular way. And so I understand now. I mean, your daughters can communicate what you cannot communicate. And your sons can communicate what you cannot communicate. I see it happen like that before. Don't raise up your hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes it happens like that. I'm just saying that, you know, we have all of us say you can do something. I can do something. And we just know the area of specialization you have. You bring it to the table and we're going to be useful together in Jesus' name. Let's finish that verse. The children of Isaac are waiting for me. They say, read our story. Don't cut it short. Verse 32. And of the children of Isaac, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. To know what Israel ought to do. Heads of them were 200, uh, were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. They had specialized knowledge. And they brought it, and that was part of the planning. Number one is to search. Number two is to specialize. Number three is to select. Now that you know, these are the various things that people can do. And just open your mind, open your heart to the whole body of Christ. My brother can do what I cannot do. My sister there can do what I cannot do. And therefore, begin to make selection. We select people. Don't put a round peg in a square hole. But you put somebody in the appropriate area in which he can work. You know, sometimes in leadership, we call a brother, come on here. This is your church. Go and do this. Pastor, please excuse me. That's not my ear. I cannot do that. If you will allow me to do this other thing, I think I'll do better there. Ah, self-will. You want to have your way. I said as your pastor, this is what to do. But the fellow has told you that is not a serious. He doesn't know anything about that. That's not self-will. That's just saying, understand me. This is what I can do. This is my area. This is what I feel convenient doing. I'll do this without any pay. I enjoy doing this. And then I can bring results to the church. If you allow me to do this, that's what we're talking about. Therefore, you make your selection in such a way that you're actually being a blessing to the people. We're going to bless people in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 3 verse 14, the selection now, Mark chapter 3 verse 14, we're looking at that, it says, and he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that they might send them forth, he might send them forth to preach. Number four, study. 
Number four, study. You know, you've got a particular thing you're doing, and you've got a particular area that you're almost an expert in. But you know, knowledge is increasing. Knowledge is increasing at a very fast rate. How can I explain that to you? Let's, let's do it this way. If you put all the knowledge of the world together, science, technology, everything, from the beginning of the world until 1900, put them like a pile like this. And then from uh, 1900 until 1950, another pile. The, the pile of, of 50 years is actually equal to the pile of all the other years. And then from 1950 to 1975, you have another pile. Then from 1975, it's almost about 10 years after you have an equal thing. They tell us now in this 21st century that, you know, another five years you have another pile as big, as high as, you know, all the other things you ever had. Knowledge is increasing. That's the reason why you need to keep on studying. And you need to keep on developing yourself so that you'll be able to match the world in which you live. You know, sometimes I'm talking to some of our members who have been in deeper life for about uh, 30 years. And then we're saying now this is what we're going to do. What do you say, Pastor? What's happening to us as church? Well, we're not doing that 30 years ago, 20 years ago. We didn't need to use that method of evangelization. And God gave us a great church, a big church, a mega church. Why do we need that now? The world has changed. And the world is moving on. If you stay where you are staying, the whole of the world will pass you by. You will not even catch their image or their shadow. They've gone way beyond. Stand up and run. And run after them. I mean in knowledge. And that's not worldliness. We use all these gadgets and, you know, we send all the information of Christ, we send it to the world, and everybody can get it just at the same time. If you know what is happening in Africa right now, we use technology in such a way, you know, we're preaching somewhere, and then we connect that to how many, how many languages? Uh, we connect that to a lot of places. You know, over here today, I have, uh, you know, a national overseer from Benin Republic, Brad Lewis, can you stand up? Praise the Lord. Now that's a uh, national overseer there, but you understand, you know, I, I came here on, on Friday and then I, I said, brother, what are you doing here? Although it's a national overseer, you know what we used to do in Africa? We used to send Nigerians to go and be national overseers in those various countries. And a few years ago, I said, no, the world is changing. You'll parle le français, that is, he speaks French. And um, <laughs> praise the Lord. And uh, so, uh, I then said, all these Nigerians, you know, our brothers, uh, good brothers from Nigeria. Even myself in Nigeria, I learned uh, the French, even though I'm in Nigeria. So when I go to those places, I, you know, I can speak the French to them. But I overseer there, they refuse to learn. They just stay there. I said, I know what I'll do. I recall them back to Nigeria, and I put the nationals there. And it's a national. But the reason I'm telling you that is this. Is uh, the president of the whole country wanted to, needed to come to America, to Washington. And then, uh, you know, he didn't have time, he didn't have the chance because he has an uh, assignment in, uh, in France. And uh, so he said, he called our pastor. And then they paid his ticket, paid everything, and sent him to America to come and see, you know, the people they need to see in Washington. Deeper life overseer being sent by the government of the country to America. You can see them. Thank you. But you see, that's because we're changing. That's because we're turning things around. If I just said, no, this is what we have always done. We'll never change anything. If we don't change those things, the world will leave you behind. And right now, when I, you know, if I go to, you know, in Togo, and from Togo we connect, we connected the, the message to, you know, many countries in Africa. And then from Ghana, we connected the message from uh, many com to many countries in Africa. Technology. And they just, uh, you know, staying in Togo. And just, you know, all those thousands of people. They, and then we invited journalists. When, when, when I went to Kaduna City for, uh, what do you call it, for crusade. We invited uh, journalists from London, from France, from Germany. We said, come and see. Those people have never seen miracles. And just because they were there, they reported everything. And now the whole thing is going throughout the world. We use technology, the print media, the print media. And over here, if Africa can use technology, what's America doing? You will use technology. I said you use technology. 
Look at this uh, screen you have here. Those at the back there, you can see your own screen. Ten years ago, did you have a screen like this? Why are you using it now? Are you backsliding? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will use more of this. And then you'll be able to reach your world for Christ. Number one is to search. Number two is to specialize. Number three is to select. Number four is to study. Study. Study your world. Study everything available. And when you study like that, you're going to have everything that you ought to have in Jesus' name. In, first, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading verse 15. It says, study to show thyself, approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, doing what? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Number five is to shine. Your life must also get it across. Your life must get it across. Get across the word. Shine. Let it shine. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Matthew 5 verse 16. Here is what Jesus said. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is where who is in heaven number six speak speak the word speak it out and just close your mouth fold your hand and just stay there get the word out just shining and leaving it out is not enough we must allow the water come out through us in um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verse 19, verse 20. But the angel of the Lord, by night, opened the prison doors, and brought them forth, and said, Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Stand up and speak. Speak the word, boldly, courageously, convincingly. And then, as you do that, just serve serve that's number seven you're serving in colossians chapter 3 verses 24 23 and 24 colossians chapter 3 verse 23 and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do it heartily as unto the lord and not unto men knowing that of the lord ye shall receive the word of the inheritance for ye serve who do you serve? The Lord Christ. You serve the Lord Christ. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do all that we need to do. Put all the strength, all the resources, everything we've got, bring it to the Lord and say, Lord, I lay everything upon the altar. Number one, there's prevailing prayer. We're going to pray. Number two, there's persuasive preaching. We're going to preach. And then number three, purposeful planning. Can we do that? Shall we do that in our churches? And then as we make use of every available hand, every available resource that we have, then we're going to reach out to the world in which we live. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer that the Lord will help us, that the work will be done, the work will be done. The time has come. We're going to enter a new era, a new phase. And we're going to do the work the Lord has committed into our hands to do. You can do something. Everybody can be useful in the kingdom. You have a part to play. You have a work to do. Bring all your skill, your resources, your strength, your ability. 